What's up, everybody, and welcome to Truth with Tara. I'm Tara Simon. I have the distinct privilege and honor today of introducing to you Mr. Kevin Alushala from the Pentatonics and Donovan Donnell. He is the partner in crime of Kevin's from Imagine Faith Talk podcast, and we've got them both here today. Now, if you guys are familiar with the show, you know that we say things on the show that nobody's really heard in the context that they've heard it before. So you're going to get some amazing stories and some amazing testimony from these gentlemen here today. Welcome to the show, guys. I'm so happy to have you. Thank you. Thank have you. Us. <laughs> good, good, good. <laughs> so we're going to get right into it. And um, and guys, this these questions and answers are going to build upon themselves. So make sure you stick around to the end. Kevin, this first question is for you. Tell my listeners how, and maybe a story that you kind of haven't said in this way, how did you get into pentatonics? Like, what was that process like? And how do you feel about it now? Um, you know what? Okay, one portion that I don't think I've really ever told anybody that I think people would be shocked to believe is that I actually didn't want to join the group when they asked me. Really? That's the truth. And, and, and let me explain that. I, I never wanted to be a musician growing up. It was not my... It, I never thought that that was what God had called me to do. My dad's from Nigeria. My mom's from Grenada. And so I always thought that with them being from immigrant backgrounds, they always wanted me to be a doctor, a lawyer, an engineer. So I always thought I was going to go into medicine. And then God did some things in my life where I knew I was going to be called into music. But I never thought it was going to be a cappella. I thought it was going to be cello playing and then maybe doing some production. So I actually applied to Berkeley School of Music and also New England Conservatory. I had gotten into both. I decided to go to Berkeley, and then I randomly had this video that went viral. And so when that video wow. went viral, the band, um, they were just forming for this TV show called The Sing-Off, which was an acapella TV show on NBC. Yes. Yes, exactly, yes, the acapella TV show on NBC, and they had asked me to do it, and I I, I actually ignored the, the request by Scott because I just didn't think, I didn't think acapella was cool. I'm just gonna be very honest. I mean, I'd gone to Yale. I'd heard so much a cappella. I had heard so much, so much of it when I was in boarding school at Andover, where I was like, yeah, this is just, it's not my thing. Uh, but what changed it for me was they showed me a video of them singing Telephone as a trio. And Scott really tried to assure me, like, we're really trying to do something very different and very cool with this. And when I heard mm. them sing, I go, you know what? I will take it as an opportunity to meet some new friends who are musical and just hang out with them. And that's how God got me. <laughs> Cause literally I fly after I graduate from Yale in 2011, the what May 25th, 2011, I graduate. I meet them two weeks later. And the first time we sing, I go, Oh, this is kind of, this is kind of cool. This is kind of fire. Like the, the kind of sound that we have, it was definitely a diamond in the rough, but it was definitely, it was definitely something special. And I remember we sang it for people in the SoCal Vocal House, which is which is uh, at USC, um, their a cappella group. And we sang it for some of those members. And they were like, you guys rehearsed this for one day? They said, yeah. And we're like, we've never really heard a sound like this. And I was like, we've wow. just rehearsed for one day. What do you mean you've never heard a sound like this? And I have, you know, wow. I didn't have as much context as they did. So the fact that we won the TV show, the fact that we got so far and we were literally figuring out our sound on the fly still to this day, I mean, boggles my mind. That's an amazing story. I, I heard bits and pieces of it, but I actually never heard it said like that. So thank you. And, and just curious, how did Scott hear of you to reach out to you in the first place? So what happened was I, I had this video of me playing cello and beatboxing at the same time. I developed this technique called cello boxing. And I played oh this gosh. piece called Julio by a guy named Mark Summer, who's part of the Turtle Island String Quartet. It's a piece that I've always loved growing up as a classical musician because it had such funk and groove and, and, and such swagger. And so I yeah. added my own spin to it by beatboxing on top of what it was, improv and it went viral on the internet. Like, I, I, I wish I could say I was the one that made it viral, but that's just, the internet does that thing sometimes. And then yeah, at right. that time, while they were literally looking for a beatboxer, it was, I think, Scott told me that I had gone through four to five different beatboxers, but nobody really fit. And when they saw okay. that video, they said, you know what, this guy is extremely musical. And I think more than the technique of beatboxing, because I wasn't I wasn't as skilled as I am now today. I wasn't I okay. even my snare sound, the, it was like a it wasn't it wasn't great. But they said it's the musicianship that I think we'll need 
and I think he could develop the skill. Mm. And so wow. they reached out to me over Facebook, just Facebook messaged me, and then actually, <laughs> yeah, legitimately. First of all, that's aging me. Oh my god, <laughs> one and then two. <laughs> But then also uh, the producer, Ben Bram, who helps put the group together, he called me. He got one of my number. He got my number from a friend of mine who was in um, one of the acapella groups at Yale. He called me and I hung up on him because I didn't think it was a real call. And then he called me again. He said, no, this is a real call. I'm like, how did you get my number? He told me how he said, check your Facebook message. One of these one of the, the members of well, that wasn't called Pentatonix then, but a Pentatonix, Scott wants you to join the group. And I'm like, fine, I will. I will do it. Oh, I sent a beatboxing audition tape, and he's like, great. Um, can you fly after you graduate? And I said, you are going to have to pay for my flight because I'm a college student. And he goes, I'm a college student too. I said, well, look, this is kind of just what it is. So what we did is that I paid for half the ticket, and his mom paid for the other half. And that's Who's how mom? I got to California. Oh, Scott's mom. Oh, my god. Yeah, and that's how I got to California and I mean, honestly, it's been 11 years since then. Isn't that crazy to say? Wow. It's been 11 years since that, that moment. That is an amazing story. I love how they're like, no, this is not a test to check your messages, dude. Literally. <laughs> like I, I, I'm like, somebody is pranking me today. I'm not having it. Like I'm just trying to graduate. I still haven't finished my senior essay. Like I'm feeling a mess and I'm getting these prank calls. <laughs> what? <laughs> Nah, nah, nah. God playing tricks. And it wasn't a trick. It was my destiny. Wow. Like, okay. So, yeah. So this is a perfect lesson for those listening. Like, first of all, you have to be able to be found, right? I mean, Kevin put himself out there. He was able to be found. And then, you know, like when people DM you on Facebook Messenger, maybe respond, you know, <laughs> like instead of thinking it's a trick that might have sped up the process a little bit. But if it's meant to be, it'll be. I mean, he, he got half his flight paid for. That is the craziest story, Kevin. So we're fast forwarding now. You're in Pentatonix. You're in your groove, right? How did you link up with this guy, Donovan? Because he has got quite a story that we are going to be getting into as well. Oh, this is my guy. This is my partner. <laughs> Let me tell you what, what happened was. So I, I'm a Christian, and and it's been such a big part of my life. But as I was moving through the ranks of the music industry, I knew that there were other people that were trying to do similar things and similar trajectories, maybe not necessarily in my vertical of music, whether it's entrepreneurship, business, other parts of entertainment. Um, yeah. And maybe they didn't have other people that were around them that they could speak to about the gray areas of faith and what that means when you're trying to be in an industry um, like like being in Hollywood. So I started mm -hmm. a Bible study in 2018 um, and it started to grow. Um, and one of his friends who had come spoke to him about it and he just came on a whim. And the minute this man talked, Father God, let me tell you, <laughs> I literally all of us on the leadership team were just like, is this guy's not, he's not real. Like the thing, he's just dropping gem after gem after gem. And I just walked up, I literally walked up afterwards and I said, can you and I hang out? Cause this is just, this is absurd. Oh, like, truly absurd. Oh, bromance? Like you can't even believe. <laughs> little, yeah. I was like, this is absurd. And so we went shot. to, we went to he dinner. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. He shot his shot. <laughs> I, shot my, I, yeah, I shot my shot. Thankfully he, <laughs> he took it. Yeah. That's uh, great. We, we went to uh, a vegan restaurant in Los Angeles called Sage. And we just, talk, I mean, we talked for like two and a half, three hours. Mm. Wow. And that's just kind of how the brotherhood was was formed. And, you know, he's mm. been one of my closest friends in L.A. since. That's amazing. I love that word brotherhood because um, it does seem. And, and again, I recently just found out about Imagine Faith from a fan of mine who DM'd me. Check your DMs. And uh, and I listened and I and I went and I was like blown away because I, I did not know, Kevin, that you were a believer. But I was also just as blown away by Donovan. Donovan speaks with such authority and, and yet such like quiet thunder in a way, right? Quiet like thunder. he doesn't even, he's like that. If he were a dad, are you a dad, Donovan? Not yet. Okay. Well, it, I, I think I am. I just don't have any children yet, but it's <laughs> okay. Okay. I thought you were going to say something else. <laughs> so when he's, I feel bad for his future children because when Donovan talks, he, or when he, he's going to be that dad who just does the eye thing. <laughs> Like, that's all he's going to need to do. It's just, yep. and the kids going to be like, 
you know, the fear of God, you know, he doesn't need to shout or raise his voice, but yeah, I love that word brotherhood. I love that you use that and listening to imagine faith. I mean, I, I was so blessed by just hearing the few episodes I got to listen to because listen, I am, I am a kingdom woman in a very dark industry. As Mm. you guys know, being in music and it feels very alone and very much like a tiny little light and there's a lot of dark and you just feel like, Hello. Like, and so I felt like I found my, I found some of my people Mm. when I heard you guys and, and hence why I, you know, worked so hard to get, get this going with you and reach out and have this interview. So now that we know, and we've connected the dots between you and Donovan, Donovan, hi, how you doing? Oh boy. Here we go. Yes, I can tell from the high. Yeah. Because listen, guys, as much as much tea as I know Kevin has about his career, like I'm low key really excited to ask this question and about Donovan because you've got to hear you've got to hear this guy's story. So Donovan, um, why don't you just tell us a brief little you know synopsis about your your life and and uh, you know we'll just start there. Wow. All right. Let's see how brief I can make this. Uh, first, thank you for even having me on the show and so being welcome. so interested. I saw you lean into the mic just a little bit more as you asked me these questions. <laughs> it's a rather enticing story. Um, no pun intended. Yeah. But yes. uh, <laughs> born and raised in the church. Um, my mom just raised me to be a performer. Um, I'm actually writing a book right now just about my first performance as Prince Charming in a, in a preschool play and how that kind of shaped my mind about what praise can do to a child and what they're praised for and of Ooh. course you know prince charming kissed this young lady <laughs> in the play and adults yeah. were praising me for doing that and later on i thought that was kind of weird but it also was a source of where i would get praise and i got addicted to praise and the stage fell in love mm. wanted to be in hollywood um at 18 years old had an agency i was with wanted to become a model and an actor on my 18th birthday i got this call of like it's about to go down and they rejected me they told me they didn't want me Kind of broke my heart mm. my senior year in high oh. school and uh, so i went to my first year in college with this broken heart but still dedicated to pursuing um the path to hollywood so i did this acting i, I did excuse me, i did modeling my first year in college did a few um calendars and whatnot and i came home after my first year and i had a friend who i went to high school with she was dating a male exotic dancer okay and so here the story begins she mm-hmm. told me because of school, you know, I got voted best body. I don't even know what high schools have that as an option. Though. Yeah, that's a little strange. It is yeah. very strange. I'm in my high school yearbook um, with my shirt off. Like, okay, what, what are you really teaching and showcasing here? Right. But beside the point, I want it. I was proud. She said <laughs> sure. that you would always, right. you know, dance around during the pep rally. She said, why don't you go and try this? I can get you in. And the reason I said yes is because I don't back down to a dare. And this is a word for people who feel like they have a life of destiny. Be careful of what other people dare you to do because it could be a detour. I'm just going to say that right there. That's, wow. Say that again for the people in the back. It was really, it was really, I took it on a dare, but my, I was almost jeopardized, excuse me, I almost jeopardized my destiny because of this dare. And I only took the dare because of my ego that I didn't have in check. And all of that wow. wasn't in check because I wanted to be in Hollywood, but she wouldn't accept me. So I accepted what we call the wicked stepsister of Hollywood, which is the male exotic world. And so I went and auditioned wow. and became a male exotic dancer for five years while simultaneously going to ch- church on Sundays and Bible study on Wednesdays. Oh, oh, that I didn't know. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that you said this is where we know. tell the stuff that nobody yes. else really knows. <laughs> bring it, bring it, Donovan. So, okay, we gotta we gotta stop and pause there. So, you you were an exotic dancer while attending church and Bible study on Wednesdays. Hundred percent, yeah. Fascinating. Tell me how that worked internally for you. Internally, they say ignorance is bliss. I guess because it worked fine for me. Um, really? until I had a moment where this guy who I was at the club with, who was a Muslim, also a dancer, um, he told me, don't play with God, man. He said, you get your life together before you go back to church. And again, my ego was just, I don't like that. First of all, don't tell me what to do. I'm going to keep, you know, going to church and going to the club. But when he said that to me, it made me want to go to church even more. It makes you want to go harder. And so mm. when I left out this story, my grandfather was the pastor of the church. And yeah, so oh born and raised with a very close relationship with the word, but still I had a different Lord. No matter what I was raised in, I I had my Lord was Hollywood. 
um, right. and, and the stage. And so I ended okay. up going to church even more and even more. And as I pressed in more to prove to him that I could do whatever I want, God got a new kind of hold on me. Mm. And for about two and a half years, I was struggling with, should I stay or should I quit the club? And I didn't know where that urge was coming from because the club, people say, well, how was it? It was everything your flesh could desire. Mm. It was the wow. money, the, the, the fame. It was the, the attention. It was just all the things that the flesh is really looking for. But yet and still, I had this pull. And I think that pull that was on me, that call, was because I kept myself in pro uh, close proximity with God's word. I kept myself in close proximity uh, with fellowship. And it mm. slowly but surely pulled me, you know what I'm saying? It gave, not necessarily pulled me out. It gave me a different kind of reason to exist in this world. And it wow. showed me that everything I was doing at the club wasn't really satisfying me anyway. Wow. And so, you know, eventually on April 24th, 2004, I had a conversation with God. He told me to quit and I never went back. And that is when God stripped me. Mm. I spent the Oof. last five years stripping myself and for entertainment. And then he said, I'm, I'm going to strip you now. And he said, but I remember one of my darkest days, um, he told me, you'll never know what's within until you have to live without. And so oh as he stripped gosh. me, he showed me how he had made me before I fell in love with this world and all these things I thought I needed. He had already given me and much more. And so mm. I, I grew in confidence and conviction and in my uniqueness. That's why on the podcast now we talk about uh, maximizing your uniqueness because that's within that is where your call is, your strength is, and where you have no need to compete with anybody else. And so, yeah, mm. that that's a that's the brief uh, story about yeah, that's my my story. Yeah. So maximizing your uniqueness, how yeah. I want to, I want to dig into that a little more for you. And also now then for Kevin, like that's, that's your heart's cry for the podcast of Imagine Faith Talks. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 100%. So when the Lord stripped you, how do you feel now that you're maximizing your uniqueness? Free. It's this, it's this freeness um, that I think every high performer is looking for. Um, mm. and my, I'm, a, I'm also a certified life coach. And one thing I take all my clients through is helping them understand the value of self-expression when it comes to, and especially in music, um, especially in theater, you really want to self-express through whatever character or instrument that you're playing. But a lot of high performers feel like they have to be like the person that's the best in the moment. They have to be yeah. like the people who have preceded them. And that means you have to sit yourself back, sit who your authentic, true, unique self in the background and fit into the mold of somebody else. And that's not satisfying. That's not fulfilling. Mm. And I feel You're now right. it's like, there's nothing that I feel like I need to do that I feel like God is calling me to do that I even second guess. It's like, I'm good. I'm not fighting mm. and thriving to succeed. I'm already successful. I'm not fighting mm. for victory. I'm fighting from victory. And so everything that I'm doing, I'm not trying to obtain anything. I'm just doing it for God's glory. And I know that he has me every step of the way. He embraces my uniqueness and I, in turn, maximize my uniqueness. That's so beautiful. And it sounds like you're operating from such a place of abundance and rest, which is so indicative of how his yoke is easy and his burden is light, there right? It is. Yeah. That's yeah, so, so beautiful. Good. Kevin, what about you? What What about your sense right now today of maximizing your uniqueness? How are you walking that out? That's such a good question. Um, the first thing I'll say is I, I want to piggyback off of what what Donovan said, I, I think there's something to be said for understanding you are already loved from within because God, mm. y you don't have to do anything else for God to love you. So yes. once you understand that now I am expressing from a place of absolute gratitude, I'm not expressing mm -hmm. because I have to, I need to put foot on the table. No, God says, right. do not be anxious or worry about what you're going to eat. If I can take care of the birds, I will take care of you. That is a promise. Yeah. yeah. So if I rest on that promise, then I am already loved as is with my mistakes, with my my past. I am loved as is. So I get to express joy from Amen. exactly who I am, because that unique frequency that I have will hopefully resonate with somebody who needs that specific frequency. Like I think so many people have, you know, do similar things maybe, but it's your unique frequency coming from your background, your past, how you grew up, all these things that create the totality of that frequency that God wants you personally to emit, to, to hit somebody's ears or hit somebody's life. And so from what you asked me, what I would say is that I, I just recently had a show at the Hollywood Bowl 
and with with my band Pentatonix. And and the, the coolest thing that I got to do at that point at that that moment. And Donovan was actually at the show. I got to world premiere um, a version of Beethoven's Fifth that I had created. I I almost called it like a World Cup version of it, and it was amazing because wow. we had a dancer on stage, Lil Buck, who was. Um, kind of pretending to be a conductor until he, he got out. I was playing my cello as if I was Eddie Van Halen, like really shredding <sighs> on the thing. Wow. And, um, and I got to dance and do all these things that I know in classical spaces aren't, isn't, have not really been seen before. But wow. I did all of it operating from exactly who I am and knowing that I wasn't trying to prove anything to somebody. I am literally expressing my unique frequency of love that God has mm. given me because that's all I'm, that's what I was created to do. So oh. it's, it's really about once you get in with the father and Donovan and I talk about this in imagine faith talk all the time. Like once you really get in with the father and start to see what he has called for you and you're realizing you're not competing with anybody else and you are literally just doing you there's a sense of relaxation, right? The blessing of the Lord maketh a man rich and there's no toil in it because you're yes. operating from the place that you are called to be because that's where you're going to find the most fulfillment. On that stage that night, I felt nothing but, but, but pure acceptance, not from the audience, but from my God who had said, mm. I, that, you are my son who I'm well pleased in because you did exactly what I called you to do. And so that's oh why gosh. when I think about maximizing uniqueness, it's a hard, long journey. But when you when you wrestle with God, like like Jacob wrestled with him, I mean, it's it's the greatest. It's the most fulfilling place you could ever be in. Most fulfilling. Wow. Hands down. Oh, I love that so much. And I love how both of your stories are are really so different. And yet there's this beautiful convergence on this one through line where the, the through line, the common thread is that you both showed up at a Bible study and you just said yes to one another Amen. and you continue yeah. to say yes to one another ever since. And, and the beautiful fruit and multiplicity that's born from that is just so palpable and so powerful. And so I want to turn it back to you guys who are watching this um, because you know, I'm always trying to apply what we talk about here to you. Why if you're not already, are you not operating out of your own maximization of uniqueness and frequency? And if you are, write it down. Like if you're not, why and how could you be? And if you are, how are you? Affirm yourself in that. Dream a little with yourself because what you're listening to right now are two kingdom guys who the Lord brought together who are so uniquely talented in their own right. But sometimes we're better together you know, and sometimes as, as you can see, they both do their own thing, but together they have this, this beautiful collaboration of hope and inspiration and encouragement where they're drawing from their own experiences to impart to anyone who wants to listen, just like we do on Truth With Tara. And I'm so blessed, like my socks are blessed off by having you guys on today. I hope it's one of many really. And, um, and I just, I want to encourage you guys, uh, if you're watching this, make sure that you stay tuned for the next uh, collab that we do. You can click right here on this video. Um, and if you have any questions for Donovan or Kevin, you can make sure to put it in the comments box below. I'll make sure it gets to them and I'm sure they'll check out the comments themselves as well. Um, thank you guys so much again for joining me on Truth With Tara and for sharing the stuff that you may have never said before, but that really needed to be said. I'm very grateful. Our pleasure. Thank you.